Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode will be discussing how to maintain good tone quality in loud chordal passages. Tone quality just referring to um, the quality of the sound that you're producing. So avoiding really harsh sounds, but also avoiding weak and thin sounds. Um, this is a dilemma that I see, especially with little children that don't have much body weight to uh, support them and the sound that they're making. However, uh, no matter how much you weigh, I think that um, the tips in this video should help you to produce a more rounded, beautiful, but still powerful sound. A lot of teachers uh, I've noticed in the past will teach, you need to drop from above and then surrender the weight into the keys. And the very best example in the world of that is Murray Pariah. He plays from above a lot, and he has one of the best tone qualities I've ever heard. Having said that, not many people are like Murray Pariah. <laughs> not many people are as talented as he is. And I think that's very dangerous to teach your student to drop from above because uh, at, from quite a distance, first of all, you can miss a lot of notes that way. And second of all, it's very easy to have the student lock their wrist. And I'm just speaking from personal experience. So if you teach this differently, great. And your students won't do this, but it's very easy. I notice, especially when a student gets nervous to have them lock their wrist and then they produce that really gross metallic sound on the piano. Um, something that I've always been a really big advocate of is playing from the keys. So I'm going to transfer my body weight into the keys, but I'm not going to sit and pound from above. That will always give you a nice rich sound. It's not this, I hope I don't distort my mics with this, kind of this like brash sound. So in addition to that, piano is a huge game of illusions. So beyond just playing with a full bodied rich sound, which we're going to play from the keys, we're going to think, I like to think from my spine between my shoulder blades and my upper back, that's the point from which everything stems. Of course, it's mostly forearms down, but I still am thinking of using my shoulder and using my back. When you connect into that thought of, I've got to have this from the back, you're going to support more with body weight. I can actually feel it like almost in my legs and my sit bones as well, like under your butt, um, and down grounded into your feet also. So it's a very athletic endeavor, whereas if I just kind of sit here casually and I just think, okay, piano is mostly playing from my fingers and I gotta play really loud, I'll probably end up using wrist and you'll get, wrist only, and you'll get a very thin sound like. you'll feel really tight. Whereas if you're using full body weight, additionally, it's so important to remember to shape large passages. Um, when I see three fortes, triple forte, pesante, meaning heavy, and then he writes sforzandos with four F markings, your brain can go out the window and just say, literally just pound as loud as you possibly can. But it's a very, I always tell my students that an audience can handle pounding for you know, a couple of chords if it's slow tempo like this, or if it's a little faster tempo, maybe a few beats, but then a little wall goes up and they don't know that this wall goes up in their mind, but it's kind of like you brace yourself for the sound. At least this is how I am as a listener. And you you kind of have to brace yourself because everything's vertical, everything's loud. And so you kind of check out emotionally. Whereas if you listen to really wonderful 
uh, pianists like uh, Sergei Babayan or Daniel Trifonov, who are absolute masters of this concept that they never allow themselves to play anything without shaping it beautifully. You can actually start a little crescendo to there. So there's a little bit of micro shaping. So yes, the difference between that and this is slight in the grand scheme of things. But it makes a huge difference, these small shaping details. Starting a little less on these A's so that I can grow to there. Also, how you take time. Listen how boring this sounds if I just play it straight and with bad dynamics. heard recordings like that. I certainly have. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be self-righteous here. I'm saying that because of the training I've received, and I'm going to reference another lesson that I had with another teacher in just a moment here, but you, you never want to stagnate in a really loud dynamic for longer than maybe two or three chords. Even then, still think about slight shaping. Now, as you saw on the shaped one... I come down a little bit, and then I come up a little, and then back down. It makes it drive harder to the climactic points if you do that micro shaping. And I'm not exploring pianissimo to fortissimo in this section. I'm exploring mezzo forte to fortissimo. So I'm keeping in line with this heavy, uh, call from Rachmaninoff writing, you know, triple forte and pesante, but I'm not letting my brain go out the window and becoming a robot and just pounding the passage. Um, speaking of Sergei Babayan, he one time told me a quote, and this will be a nice lead into this other passage. He, he told me this, uh, oh, it's his quote, sorry, it's, it's, he wasn't quoting anyone. He said, what a pity that so many pianists just pound their way through the passages to get what they call the golden sound. There is nothing golden about that or something to that effect. And I loved that because people will say, oh, get this golden sound. What's golden about that? Piano is relative to everything else you do, how you voice things, how you shape things. So beyond just playing a really harsh sound, there's a wide spectrum that, of volumes that you can play and effects that you can create through shaping and voicing. And that's what gives you the golden sound. It's not just, there's nothing inherently golden or black or whatever you want to call that or harsh. That's not harsh. Is it rich? I, the, the correct answer is, is this rich? Is it depends. If you're playing Lejibe and you play, that will actually sound harsh. If you're playing Rachmaninoff Second Concerto and you play, that might actually sound weak. This is another little passage. Um, I took this to my uh, first teacher, Susan Duhlmeyer, um, before I performed this uh, with Symphony. You can watch that. Um, it was quite a few years ago, I think 2014, but I'm taking it a little slower because I haven't played it for so long. Um, and I played it like this for the first time. Let's see. And she said, Josh, why are you um, pounding? Just with zero shape. And I said, oh, really, am I? Because I, in my mind, I was thinking, and then to there, and then a little less, and then regrow to there, and then a little less.
us. In my mind, I was doing that, but my emotions were getting the better of me. So I was just... And it produced very vertical playing like that. And so I said, okay, let me, let me try it again. And that second time, as you can see, and if we want a little faster, let me try this. At least the second time um, has a lot of shape going on, but in addition to that, it makes the points that you arrive to there, or if you wanted ta da da da, you could do that, or you could drive to your downbeat. Try that again. So I like to start big and then regrow. hearing that is going to say, geez, that's really weak. I'm not doing this kind of really sheltered, guarded type playing like, oh, I can't play a harsh note. You know, in, in an attempt to have a, a rich sound quality, you can still play with full power. You're just choosing strategically the points at which you give full power and leading in or leading out of those. Sorry. Again. So I back off a little there and then re -crow. And that concept is so important in any loud passage that you are playing. Um, I mean, it can be Chopin, it can be Bach even. Um, in Bach, you're probably not getting to the fortissimo level that you are in Rachmaninoff um, in very many passages, if any. But even in box music, you still want to shape that music. Just because it was written for harpsichord doesn't mean that you have to be completely flat in your dynamic scheme. You still want beauty. Music is about personal expression and making a, a statement, um, interpreting what the composer had, following as much as possible the score and what they've marked, but then putting your own spin on it. We don't just want one definitive way of playing and everyone tries to play the exact same. Each person has a unique voice that they want to um, have portrayed in their performances. But in the end, remember that creating momentum through the use of how you voice things, how you take time, how you shape things using dynamics up and down, and, and even within a chord, that sounds so different than, than that. That sounds so one-dimensional. But if I voice well, that really uh, comes out really nicely. I actually played for my teacher the other day, the Liebes lead, um, and the end, let's see if I can just. That's how I played it for her the first time. And she said, why don't we bring a little more vibrancy to that chord? Because this is a weak inversion. So bring, bring out your tops and then settle with a richer bass there and that brings so much more dimension to that so it can be even on really soft fleeting passages like that as well i hope this video has been helpful if any of you have any questions my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I try to answer as many of those as I can. Please forgive me if I'm unable to answer all of them um, as I receive thousands of these each month, but I do like to connect with as many of you as I can. I will leave a few links for my paid courses uh, if you wanna go even deeper than this channel goes over. A link for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to help take your playing to, your, to a higher level. These are tips I use every day in my teaching and also in my own personal practice. And finally, a link for uh, my gear kit, which includes links for all the lighting, the microphones, the cameras, the audio interface that I'm using there, and also a link for um, 
my piano technician who restores uh, used Steinways, he, he restored this one, and uh, it's just beautiful. So if any of you have any questions, um, again, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.